For years, he's been known for his music, but rapper Jeezy says his life has been so much more than just about the music and success that he enjoys now. He's now speaking out about his life before all of that, his own mental health, something you do not hear very often from the hip hop community, and a lot more is in his brand new book. Here's what he told me when I sat down with him. Your first line is, I can't even front. I, I started was, out as a thief. <laughs> as a thief. Yeah. Now my grandmother would say, "Why are you telling everybody your business?" Right. <laughs> but why was it so important for you to be this real and this raw with people right. who picked up your book? Well, because I, I felt in the beginning that I was dishonest, and I learned as I went on that life is about honesty and integrity. And I was very ambitious back then, so I thought that taking something was actually a success, but it was not. And my grandmother was the one that told me. She said, I can deal with anything except a liar and a thief. And that changed my mind about that whole. A lot of our grandmothers had some of the yeah, similar yeah, sayings yeah, um, sure. where that just wasn't something they were willing to, yeah. to have somebody do in their life. When people see you, they think successful, like right. this guy is out front, he's out there, he's doing his thing, he's wearing a nice gold watch, just a little rose something. gold little, at that. A little some. They see these things and they think, well, if he can do it, why can't all other black right. folks do it? Why right. can't they rise? What do you say to them? Well, that's, what, that's why I wrote the book, because I, I think when people see me, they see the finished product. And this has been 40 years of me going through everything I went through. And even a lot in the book is about how, and, and the reason why I named the book Adversity for Sale, rather than let me sell you my success, is because I want you to know how many times I've lost mm -hmm. and continue to lose and still keep the same enthusiasm. And I feel like that everyone, black, white, brown, whatever, needs to hear that even when you thought that I was on top of the world, the world was on top of me. So even when I was at my highest, I was at my lowest. And I wanted people to understand that, you know, it doesn't, it, life is not perfect. It's not fair. It's hard, but it's not fair. What let me say, it's hard, but it's fair, right? And you got to continue to believe and keep pushing because that's what my story is about. I didn't want to tell people about the finished product. I want to tell them about how I got here. You talk about paranoia in your book. I, mm -hmm. I got that far. Okay. You, you, yeah. you talk about paranoia in your book and the fact that you yourself really paranoid for, for several years. Yes. Now, it's a really uncomfortable feeling. Do you think, though, that that fueled you or that that started to break you down? Well, it was a little bit of paranoia, uh, a whole lot of post-traumatic stress, a whole lot of trauma, depression, uh, anxiety, all those things. Well, I would say this. The thing that got me on my journey to healing is that I started to learn and understand what I was going through because before that, I actually thought, thought something was wrong with me. Like when you come from poverty, this is how you're supposed to feel. But I started to understand that it was terms and it was things that you can do to help with these things. That's why I put a lot of it in the book because as a black man, when you come from where we come from, it's almost weak to have people help you, you know, work through things, right? And for me, I had to learn that the hard way that everybody needs some help. And I didn't know I had trauma. <laughs> I didn't know I was depressed. I didn't know I had anxiety. I didn't know I had post-traumatic stress. I thought these are all the things that we go through. You thought it was normal. Of, because yeah. it, but because in the, where you grew up and, right. and the life you led, it right. was normal, yeah, right? It was normalized, for sure. Yeah. For sure, it was normalized. And, and you know, when you're losing friends at a young age and even in your adulthood and, and you know, people that are around and they're going away doing 20, 30 years in prison, and coming back like it's a normal thing, like you don't understand how desensitized you are. And as you get old into your adult life, you wonder where things are coming from, but it's actually coming from your young adulthood. And I had to go deal with that. And like they say, if you ain't never, you know, seen the devil face to face, that means you guys are walking in the same direction. So I had to go take care of myself and, and, and because I'm a leader and I'm leading men mm. and, I'm, and I'm leading, you know, women and children. It's just like, I have to have clarity and be in my, my, my right mind for the decisions I make, right? And I wasn't that way in the beginning because I had so much trauma. But I, I'm, I'm not all the way healed yet. I'm still working, it's work in progress. But I do feel that I've, I'm in a better state than I've ever been. Do you worry about the words in rap, the words in hip hop? I mean, look, you, you have Tupac and then you have right. you know, Lil Jon or you have, you, know, you, can, you can go down right. the, a number of voices in hip hop. And some of them are really deep, that's poetic. It tells a story about what mm -hmm. they've been through, trying to help other people who've been through the same thing. But then you also have misogyny, violence, mm -hmm. drug selling. Mm -hmm. Do you worry about the words in hip hop that are, that are going out to the masses and making it seem I, glamorous? I think it's just the message is, is, is um, you know, cause I, I can't be the one to talk because I, I spoke on everything that I went through, but it was my truth. 
mm. you know, and I feel like the, the reality is, is it's not on us, it's on America. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, we can't control our environments. Like we put in these projects and these buildings and these neighborhoods and we don't have the right tools and the right resources, so we have to survive. So all these stories you're hearing are people that are coming out of these situations in these environments, telling their story, hoping that they can connect with other people, right? Because it's therapeutic for them as well. But as you say, like Tupac Shakur, that's who changed my life. He was my therapist and he didn't even know it. <laughs> he was know? a lot of people's therapists. Yeah, and, I, and, and the reason why I had rules and I had a moral compass and values is because I listened to what Pac said. I didn't just listen to the music, I listened to what he said. So as I began to get into the streets, I, I had a moral compass already. And I was hoping that's what my music was doing, giving them a moral compass. Because even if my music was negative in the beginning, there was always a message in it. You gotta believe, thug motivation, the inspiration, the recession. You know, there's always something in there that had something to do with evolving or either growing or staying motivated. I gotta tell you, um, sitting down with him, there is a reason why his book is a bestseller, a New York Times bestseller. His first line in the book says, I was a thief. And he goes on from there. And he is so raw and real. And you almost never hear somebody from the community of hip hop talking about mental illness, mental health, the problems he had. He's an incredible person, not just a famous rapper. It's important that he's doing that. Yeah. Really interesting guy.